All right, here we are. First episode. E episode one of the Lion Club. I think a lot of people thought this wasn't going to happen, myself included, but here we are. Um, I guess the idea of the show for anyone that's interested is just to talk to random kiteboarders that myself and any of the viewers or podcast listeners out there might want to know something about. Maybe even some other people that aren't kiteboarders we might get on the show. But um, for this first show, we've got a pretty interesting guest, a new guy that's been on the come up the last few years. Maybe a couple of years ago, you didn't really know his name, but I think, I think lately he's been kind of stomping his authority a bit, throwing down a few NBDs and other stuff. We're going to get into that a bit later, but yeah, I'd like to introduce Alex Mays. Pleasure to be here. Already a fan of the show, even though it's episode one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, matey. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, it's an idea I've had for a while that kind of want to just get people talking, I guess, you know. I, I'm interested to hear more about what people have to say about kiteboarding, interested to hear how they kind of got into the sport and evolved. So I'm stoked we can have you here on the show as the first guest and get it kicked off. Sick. I'm pretty happy to be here and I think the show is a really great idea, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's get it started and just kind of bring it back to the beginning. Um, how did you get started kiteboarding? How did, how did it take off for you? Um, I started because of my parents. Um, so they, they were uh, windsurfers and they switched to kiteboarding. And like they teach me how to kite and I was always going uh, the weekend with them uh, kiting and they have a kite shop so that was really nice to be able to hang out at the shop with them and uh -huh. so i've always been involved and always very close to kiting it's been pretty much of my life actually so you were kind of the the kid in the kite shop yeah exactly helping people <laughs> buy some gear maybe like doing odd bits and pieces fixing bladders exactly and a bit of lines a bit of and all this kind of yeah. stuff Everything. What what age would you say that was when you were first in the shop? I mean, the shop has been there for as long as I can remember. Actually, it's been there for like thirty years. So they were doing windsurfing before kiting uh -huh. at Matos, and I mean, so actually the shop was there before me. So wow, that's cool. So your your parents were like windsurfing fully yeah, into that exactly. before. Had a shop, was selling gear exactly. and everything. And then they slowly like started to kite and sell kites at the same time and yeah and then here we uh -huh. are i guess that was kind of like the natural progression for a lot of people yeah. they were windsurfing i was windsurfing before there wasn't kiteboarding yeah i i saw kiteboarding at the beach and i was like oh this looks sick you can ride a tiny board you know exactly i want to get into that yeah, i remember like i mean everybody got super excited you know they were just like you could kite with less wind and was like less gear uh -huh. and everybody got super pumped including my dad so just, yeah, that's uh, cool. I guess you came up like pr pretty much in that perfect timing then where kiteboarding was just taking off and yeah. you were like just a little kid at the right age being able to exactly. learn to kite. That was yeah. like And my, I was really lucky that my parents were showing me some, some nice videos and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I was actually just looking a bit at like the evolution of kiting all my life. Wow. And it's pretty cool. Well, let's not get too far ahead. I yeah. want to try and... Um, let's go back. Yeah, let's take it back. I want to concentrate on what was the equipment you kind of got started with what was your the first kite that you got going along on the board yeah. what what was it the first one i mean i had like a two meter whippy cat but that was more from the beach i did my first little tax with it like a whippy cat two line two meter but after that i had a north meter uh, a north sky like four meter buster a buster uh-huh so it's like the medium, low aspect, four line. Yeah, exactly. I think, I'm pretty sure I remember it. And yeah. I remember it being quite an all right kite, yeah, actually. Yeah, it was actually a super safe kite. And yeah, my parents were a bit like hesitant at the beginning to like introduce me to kiting. So they wanted to wait that proper kite uh -huh. arrived. And then I had like a, this kite, we had like kind of the first kite with some, like quite a decent D-power. Um, yeah. So after that, I had a switchblade, actually. <laughs> 
I'm going to just bring this up because yeah. I saw in a different video you said you were nine years old when you learned to kite. Yeah, exactly. So you were like nine years old and you got this North Buster. Yeah. Got exactly. on the water. <laughs> my dad gave me a little board and yeah. What awesome. was the first board you had actually? I had a Nash board, like one of the first ones they made for kids, like pretty small one. Yeah. And actually it was, was funny because I didn't thought like Nash was making like some, some board for kids. And my, once the, the, the importator came with this at the shop and my dad was like, oh, well, that's a really small board. It's going to be perfect for my son, you know, and he just no way. gave it to me and I was super stoked. Well, I remember back then that I had a board for kids as well, but that was actually for adults. Yeah. Yeah. It was so small. <laughs> it, it was, was like really a, small, actually. It was like a 118, I mean, <laughs> and it was supposed to be like a it board. It was kind for, of for ages. Actually, like the board was pretty small for. Yeah, I mean. For ages, so it was actually fine for me. Probably all those boards back then, majority at that point in time, would have been fine for a kid now. Yeah, exactly. It's changed so much, and I hope we get to talk about that topic as well. As like, I mean, that the boards went just from like 150 into like much bigger and keeps on getting bigger. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was crazy to think at one point I had a 118, you know? Yeah, I know. And I, I like, was well. trying to ride boots with this board. And of course, no one's there to like help you. No. Like guide you or tell you what yeah. to do. So you just stick with this yeah. stuff and like- you Just get stuck with the Yeah, you're setup. Limit, just yeah. limiting what you're doing, you know? Cause you don't know any better. You need the people to guide you You had stuff. like that big stance with like super small tips. <laughs> Oh, it was crazy. We're going to get to that. But um, yeah, so you had the, you had the, North, the North Buster yeah. and then you said the next kite you went to was a switchblade. Yeah, I had a four meter Cabrina switchblade. One of the first ones was like this uh, Brazil color. I remember I loved it because that was my f I made my first trip to Brazil with this kite and it was like kind of like the color of the flag of Brazil. Uh -huh. So that was really nice. That was like my, my favorite guy. I think I kept it forever. I, I, I think I, I still have it. Yeah? Uh, yeah. That's sick. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like the, really the kite I kept because I used it the, the longest. And uh -huh. from like, I don't know, like 9, 10, all the way to 14 or something. I didn't really change kite. I only need like a, like a small kite and it was uh -huh. pretty, pretty tiny <laughs> still. <laughs> and I, was, I could go like any time with it, like any wind. It was super nice. Yeah. I, I, can vaguely remember having an eight meter and I'm pretty sure I used that for a super long time because yeah. you could just go in light wind, go in strong exactly. wind, it didn't no really matter. You could, you could go like a nice pull and like some deep power and it, uh, the bar was very nice. The, also the safety system was really safe for the time. So, okay. so you had the buster, you got the switch blade and then do you remember what was happening after this? What 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 did you get? Yeah, I had after the Switchblade, I had a bunch of Cabrina kites for a while. I was like always like, uh -huh. just, I mean, kind of had the Nomad, I had like uh, some other Cabrina kites. Uh -huh. uh, that stayed like all the way until I got like a, like a, like a small sp sponsorship from Norse. And, yep. then, and then I went back to Cabrina. So your dad was selling Cabrina in the store yeah, actually. Exactly. And so you were riding Cabrina through exactly. through kind of a shop flow deal from your dad. Exactly. And then you got on a bit of a deal with North and you yeah. were riding North for a while there. Exactly, yeah. And like that, National Flow. When was that like 18 or something or 17 you had North? Or was it I before? had like, so that was three years ago. I stopped, yeah, like, so I was there yeah, it was like six years ago. I had my first like a uh, little sponsorship. I received uh -huh. some kites and yeah, been, I was always very grateful for that, for that opportunity as well. Yeah. That somebody, not only because of the shop, but where I was like, oh, well, it'd be nice if we can sponsor you and everything. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, when people, when brands are kind of giving opportunity to young riders yes. to come up and they see something there, that's exactly. always like something you've got to be appreciative of, I guess, you know, you can't. Yeah kind of take that sort yeah. of stuff for granted so that's true and yeah I had, I had that cabrina and then after i had a bunch of switchblade nomads and then i had a few vegas i had a bit of air kite and i tried like some slingshot guys i was i was actually because of the shop i was able to i mean i didn't have the like sponsorship until much later but it was more i could actually ride with what i wanted and it was uh -huh. very nice i could mix there some setups or yeah, that's the, cool. I, I've always been like super passionate about like the gear and my dad used to oh, try these kites, you know, and that's why I really learned like to, to try like many different kites and kind of know like what, what I kind of liked as well. I think it's pretty important. Yeah, it's cool. I, 
I actually wasn't sponsored until, I don't know, five or six years ago, yeah. like properly. And before that, I had the same thing. I would just kind of choose yeah. the kite I like, the board I like, the bindings I like, the harness yeah. I like, everything of the exact like piece you want to yeah. ride. And I think sometimes as a pro, you kind of miss out. Not always, but yeah. sometimes you miss out on having the ability to try like a new board, yeah, totally. try a new yeah, piece of equipment sure. that might make your riding you know, different or progress yeah. in some way just because you're stuck on a certain, you know, brand that has a certain philosophy or does things exactly. a certain way, you know. Yeah. You should always be able to try stuff and also uh -huh. to bring your, from your own company, you know, and brand you work for uh, the, the best gear you can. That's like really the goal. And I think a good setup is super important. For sure. I mean, when I, like just talking myself, yeah. when I'm designing a board, I'm openly just trying boards from other brands because why not? There's a reason why the brands are making boards and they're popular. You might as well test that gear, see if it's what you exactly. like, you know? And you can't say that you don't like some gear testing at once. No. You know? you can like people that. ride a board from another brand, that was crap. It's like, no, you, you rode the fucking thing for a day. You can't, you can you can't tell me anything, you know? Totally. You have to test that thing, you know, a week, a month, maybe even like maybe a couple a month, weeks or yeah. something to work to work out what it is that people are really liking yeah. about this it's board like all the piece process, of equipment. Sure. But yeah, that's another. Yeah, that's a good, another, good topic actually. Another topic entirely, probably. I mean, maybe for a different show, different time, but oh, interesting I, nonetheless. I think. Yeah, for sure. Like setups and what brands. I mean, what kites really brands are pushing and like what actually people really like, you know? Like sometimes people might be surprised with the kite they like, they just maybe haven't tried it or haven't really seen a promotion of it or, or something. So it's great to, to just get out there and try uh, some gear and yeah. just know what you like. I mean, if I was to suggest anything to people that are listening or watching this now, it would just be to test gear, you yeah. know? try lots of different stuff don't just listen to the guy yeah. in the shop or the yeah. or the dude at the beach you know exactly. he might not like what you like you might exactly. like something else that yeah he, like more rocker yeah. like smooth landings and you don't know like when i was a kid for example everyone where i live was into wave riding riding surfboards with straps and the few other people were into like boosting and doing board offs yeah. And like all the things I do now are completely like the opposite of those things. So yeah, if I just stuck to whatever they were doing yeah. and just followed them, you know, I never would have found the things I yeah. really enjoy doing. Well, so. luckily you didn't want to stop this freestyle, right? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> that was kind of a mix between. Well, if I rode straps, then it wouldn't have yeah, happened either. True. So <laughs> That's a good answer. Um, I guess the next thing I want to kind of get out of you is the progression of the tricks like what did you what was the first tricks you started doing do you remember like how you how you started off yeah I, rem I mean the first real tricks I remember was like the first time I was like really actually like unhooking that was really I mean before that I was kiting and everything but I, w I mean I liked it I was doing it with my parents it was a good activity I was happy to escape a bit the city like going on the weekend with my parents skating at the beach and stuff. But I remember really like having this feeling at like 13, 14, 13. I was like first doing like some rally to blind and some S-bands. And I was just like, oh, this thing is actually so much fun. And I just realized, I mean, I realized it before, but especially at this moment, I was like, I'm really passionate. I want to do that like uh -huh. a lot. So actually like my first, yeah, rally to blind and stuff like that. And my first endo pass was actually like a back mob, which was actually weird. Because at the time was yeah, different that's a, because I was like kind of small and I had to like do like maybe like more of an easy one, you know. That's a strange yeah. first trick for sure. Yeah, it was actually random. I, <laughs> I don't really remember the very first yeah. handle pass I did. I'm just thinking it was a Rayleigh to blind. Yeah, or some, must be something like this. <laughs> There's been a few. I, I, I think that's what I did first. Yeah. And if it wasn't that, maybe it was like a back to blind or something. But I also remember at the time that I learned to do my first tricks, lots of people's first trick would be like a slim chance or something, you know? Yeah. Which now would seem pretty weird, I think, yeah. if someone just learned a slim chance. Yeah, like from the beginning. Because 
I think back then as well, back to blind and front to blind, they weren't really common tricks for kiteboarders to do. No, not really. Like that was like another time, and I was kind of like seeing like some like mob five, some riders and stuff like that later, and I was like, oh, uh -huh. this looks fun, you know, when you have your kite a bit lower, and I somehow was more like attracted to to that. And yeah, I mean, I remember like a lot of people just doing like those. Like yeah, slim with the kind of bit like sand. And uh -huh. I remember those tricks were like kind of like uh, like the standard. Yeah. But I remember like because I was actually really small and I didn't have that much strength, I was like, oh, I have to do like some other other stuff first. So. Was did the reason you try this back mode was because you saw people doing it at the beach or you were watching videos or something like? Yeah, I've always watched a lot of videos. Like that was like really a main thing. And my dad actually like uh, loved kite videos. Like I remember first time he handed me autofocus, I was just like, "Wow, what is this?" You know, like it was so like it was so great. We watched it together in the shop. He put it on the TV in the shop, and then and after that we watched at home. And I was always very lucky that he was showing me kind of like the stuff he, he thought were were nice and original. Uh -huh. And then so from there I was all the time like looking for. For like content or riders and seeing a bit like the style and what they were doing and everything yeah that's cool i mean lucky your dad gave you yeah. autofocus for example <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i mean as well my dad wasn't giving me these videos but i had yeah. like some other people at the beach who had like lots of vhs's yeah. and stuff yeah, and yeah. they would lend them to me and i would just watch them all yeah. and copy them and it was so great yeah i got very lucky actually and he, so, i mean he wasn't doing like those stuff actually in front of the focus but he just thought they were kind of i mean different and he really he really loved it and that yeah that movie was awesome like when i saw it there was like so much inspiration for so, sure i mean that was yeah probably one of the most iconic videos for, for sure. that kind of time i guess it had the biggest yeah. the biggest hype around it like yeah everyone was kind of waiting for that to drop and when it came out everyone was pretty yeah. psyched yeah. i mean it was basically a video of dre but yeah <laughs> i mean like the the, there were there were a few like friend tricks no i mean the his part was insane it was just like flow and and way ahead of his time like every trick was just like what like it was yeah it was pretty crazy but I think you're working on a, on a nice project as well with uh, you one, so I'm really looking forward yeah. to, to see that as well. And I'm happy that uh, more, I mean, I mean, more riders like, for example, Mowgli's Jungle or The Bubble and you guys now with E1 are, are trying to do like a bit bigger videos and some deeper projects. So I'm actually pretty happy to see, to see that from a close look because uh, we ain't got uh, quite a bit. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, man. It's definitely my kind of vision and my idea of the sport is to have more of what we're doing kind of catalogued yeah you know a lot of people don't see what we're yeah. doing most yeah. of the time hence why we're talking now as yeah. well just so people can you know they relate a little bit more they understand a bit more about what we're doing and i think video parts especially in a sport like kiteboarding where it's really hard to just go down to the beach one random day and display to someone, you know, what are you doing? Or yeah. like, show them exactly like, hey, we did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a, a wakeboarder, a skateboarder, they can go to the park, probably do that thing, you know, yeah. straight away if they're like some consistent rider. But yeah. with kiteboarding, you've got so many factors of yeah. like the wind, it's everything crazy. aligning that. It's crazy. I think it's just cool to have that, you know, yeah. on, on tape or on, CD or computer or whatever, so people, you know, down the road can watch it back and kind of remember what what went down. Yeah, well, it's super cool. I, I've also been really attracted very early from just like video parts and making videos and actually showing uh, people what what we're up to and, and everything. And I think in guiding is definitely quite hard to make a, a video part happen because there's so many things that can come like in line like the winds or the spots the tides i mean like we know how it yeah. works and i mean it's definitely not easy and i've seen you battling out there a few times trying to like yeah. get a trick or just make something happen and you see like it just doesn't happen and yeah sometimes it's just like not with you and you just gotta let it go that's just kind of i mean that's kiteboarding being a uh, we were talking about this earlier today even that being a pro kiteboarder is as much about being a good rider as it is about being patient 
and exactly. being able yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, because it gets to you sometimes. Calm yourself down and realize that, you know, this is how it is. You're just going to have to wait it out. There's going to be a day in a couple, you know, in a exactly. week or whenever time that you going to get a chance to try what you want to yeah. try and hopefully that works out then. Yeah. I and if it doesn't, then hey, there's going to be another time. There's going to be another day. I think that's the toughest with skateboarding, just like the missions and just got to chill and sometimes the wind is with you and you just go for it. For sure. Well, since we're on the topic of video parts, I kind of wanted to ask you what was your first video part, like first proper video part, I guess, mm. where you where you were kind of putting down some tricks and... I think like remember? one of my first videos from from Hood, I mean, I had like a like a couple. I've seen like a yeah. few yeah. pre, yeah, like, you know, eight, maybe 18 years old or something. There's yeah. a few videos of you online. Yeah. There's this and that. Just but like a few art tricks here and there. Yeah, but no, it's, it's not really a part though. It's no, more, it's not. So, so maybe I think the first, first real hood? one I made was here last year. It was like a, like a part I was kind of happy about, but we didn't have that much room. But I think last year, Brazil. But I think this year is going to be probably my first real one. <laughs> but yeah. I just, I mean, I, before I had a few videos, but like, like not, nothing that nothing you're kind like, of like nothing close super to real stoked part. on. Like, no. Well, I thought the, I think it was the Welcome to Gabrina oh, yeah, yeah, actually, video, yeah, yeah. the hood part. That was... Yeah. Yeah, that was actually my first like real. I thought that was pretty decent, video. especially. Yeah. I mean, for that time, there's some yeah. pretty pretty good tricks in there, and I guess that's your. Yeah. True. In my opinion, that'd be the first. Yeah, my first one. Yeah, that's true. Kind actually. of part. Yeah. I almost forgot about them because Brazil is taking so much of my attention <laughs> now. I was actually thinking about Brazil. Now, when I joined Cabrina, uh, that was that, that was great. I was in Hood. They we just had a new Cabrina rail, and then just like. I was like with the right person at the right time and actually that summer was like one of my best summer. That was like the first time I, I went in with River, met like most of my closest friends now actually. Uh-huh. And yeah, just from there that was like, a, it was interesting as well to also film Analus and a bit like some, some other teammates and to also be a bit behind the camera was, yeah, yeah. just made it all happen ourselves at Luz. So. I thought it was, it was nice as well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's changed a lot in kiteboarding, I guess, is once there was sort of like, you have a videographer and he travels with you and films all the team and makes like this cool video or whatever. And now it's sort of like the onus is on the rider to make yeah, like yeah. this full, you know, <laughs> cinema production. It's, it's crazy, like, yeah. man, I'm a kiteboarder. I'm not like, yeah, yeah. most people aren't. Yeah, we're you not know, like a like director, nowhere, a you know? producer. <laughs> yeah, we're not no way fun. We've got like you gotta, normal skills I mean, here, people. We need to fucking tone it down a little bit. Uh, you're too good in the way, by the way. But uh, yeah, well, it's true. It's changed a lot. I mean, I remember before like seeing some some production and everything. I think for sure, like uh, it's changed a bit. Like riders have put like themselves more and more behind the camera, which yeah. is I guess good and a bad thing. But I mean, there's some good things in it, like. For sure, I mean it's tough when you when you have to go behind behind the lens and just spend also some time doing that. But at the same time, I, I think, for example, like I really like your kind of videos because you have the you have the eye of a rider. You know, uh -huh. like the angles that are gonna look pretty cool or some different ideas and not always like the same uh, same tricks. So I think it's it's kind of nice. I've seen a couple of good uh, videos lately. So yeah. Yeah, I think. It kind of works both ways because, yeah, exactly. like you say, the riders kind of got a better idea maybe yeah, exactly. than someone that doesn't kite or yeah. someone that's not, you know, fully yeah. in the crew or knowing, yeah. you know, being able to kind of know what a person's yeah. going to do how when they're doing a trick, how it's going to look, yeah. the angle that might be cool. But then I think there's kind of the other side of it that people sort of don't understand that sometimes people are kind of just being taken advantage of as well because they're, yeah. they're a rider and they're, you know, they might be getting a budget to be a rider, but then on top of that now it's like, hey, yeah, you need to make these videos, you need to, you know, like run this whole social well, media yeah. campaign. You, you basically need to like promote our marketing, like do our marketing for us. It's sort of, True. whereas once before those were all separate categories, you know. And you had like this guy doing this. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think like it's totally fine that 
the whole social media thing exists and writers should be promoting brands on their channels and all this type of stuff, making their own little edits. But that's kind of like something I see as a an, um, an add-on. Yeah, yeah, you it's, know, an, it's, add -on it's, it's an extra to, to what yeah. should be happening already within the brand. And yeah. I think a lot of brands have kind of like moved away from that a bit. And I hope, I hope that changes because I want to see more, you know, proper production. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to see that as well. Proper edits, you I mean. know. So hopefully we see that kind of the time frame where autofocus and Cabrina yeah. made a lot of full lengths and stuff. That was a really cool time frame. So I hope that brands see yeah. the value in that and re reinvest in that again. I would love to see like another, another of these videos happen, like like with autofocus for sure. I will be super happy to work on, on, a, on a project like that. And I think there's so many great riders in the team that could make it uh -huh. look uh, I mean we had nice. we kind of had it with the bubble already yeah they exactly like that was that like back. a proof yeah that was like a perfect example that actually you can make like a like a very nice video and just spend time doing that and people are still watching it and really interested sure. in, in seeing it so I mean in 15 years time people are gonna yeah, they're still, still gonna probably at that, they'll yeah. still talk about the bubble of course they're definitely not gonna talk about Alexander James Lewis uses <laughs> fucking <laughs> random Kite loop, Kite loop, uh, <laughs> random, <laughs> random skate, Instagram <laughs> video you know because yeah. that's just disappearing I know I know um, and yeah. it's it's actually kind of sad because a lot of that stuff it just is. gets lost yeah. you know a Facebook video yeah I mean you don't you don't see it again really no I mean you, you rewatch it and stuff and you can get more views but like i mean this is i get i mean yeah i guess it's kind of important for for some people but i really yeah i really hope that social media is not gonna it's not gonna take actually all the credit and actually maybe put some better writers on the side as well so mm -hmm. because it on doesn't always reflect quite the reality you know you can be just no. skyboarding in like paradise islands and everything but I hope we're also going to focus on some more uh, quality stuff, like, for example, video parts. Even, like, I mean, any rider, like, I want to see more of them. I want to know more about them, uh, that they are pushed a little bit more as well. So we don't always hear about, like, that many riders, actually. It's always, like, kind of the big names coming, coming back. So it's great to see some, bit, some other ones as well and just yeah, learn I a little bit more from them. I guess as the whole social media thing evolved, the people that were kind of already on top in brands just got promoted and got bigger because they were promoted by the social media channels of the brands and the people that were, that are underneath or not sponsored and trying to come up, they just don't have yeah, that reach like, yeah, or that yeah. coverage because they're not being promoted by a big brand already. True. So those people that were already on top just kind of got put like higher again on top which I mean might be cool for them, yeah. but I don't think it's that good for, you know, the the younger guys or girls who yeah. are trying to come up and work their way into a brand or getting sponsored or whatever. Yeah, it just make I think it just makes a harder, harder. Yeah, it's definitely harder. For them. Yeah, come, like just making a name from yourself and, and stuff like that is not always no. that easy. I've seen like actually some of my favorite writers now actually sometimes. I didn't really hear of them like at the beginning, you know, like mm -hmm. for example, like Sam Light or even like E1 like wasn't like pushed that much before and, and now luckily it's cool that like, you, you can see him like uh -huh. more and stuff, but it's, yeah, definitely. I guess it works both ways a little bit because having the internet now yeah. also makes it easier to get your name out there. For if sure. If you live somewhere where there's nothing, yeah. no shop. I mean, I didn't have a shop. I didn't yeah. have anyone. I was to, super lucky, actually. <laughs> to help me, you know. And yeah. in the beginning, I yeah. like I wasn't also really thinking I would, you know, get sponsored or go yeah. anywhere. But not having that pathway would make it impossible. But now you have the internet. You That's can share. That's the best part about it, for sure. You can share videos yeah. and this and that. Maybe there's a kid in Brazil here or something. That's, yeah, that happened. That really happened. <laughs> you know, that probably happened. That's, we got Bebe. That's Bebe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You so know, great, hey, look at yeah. this kid. He's the craziest dude you've ever seen and, and then skyboard for sure yeah it's it's i mean that's the best part about the internet for sure except that i mean quality over quantity and like content hungry which is my opinion is not that great but i hope people still see the quality and the good movies but for sure the best part about the internet is that you can be from anywhere ha like just post something on the internet and you're gonna get noticed and that's the best part about it for sure 
just like I mean get out there with some of your friends film a few tricks and just build it up from there and I mean I think anything is possible yeah I mean I guess in a way that's what I did and that's kind of what you did as well yeah. we both <laughs> kind of came from that and people that are in kind of the circle we're in which is more about park and less about competition yeah most of them are kind of from that background as well where yeah, they're true. producing their own media and you know showing people what they're capable of and then getting exactly. recognized yeah. for that and coming up yeah this whole crew you can see that they're doing like a lot a lot of different things as well uh -huh. and they have been doing a pretty good job shout out to the guide parking crew for sure <laughs> So we were talking your first, um, we we're saying your first kind of proper video part was the Cabrina, welcome to Cabrina, welcome to Cabrina the video, River. and we'll put that in the description below. Yeah. But I also think that that kind of, in my opinion, spurred you on to sort of do that again the next year. And then again the year yeah. after so <laughs> and then you and then never stop actually just like now that constant you're just, circle now you're just on the loop right <laughs> you just video part <laughs> yeah it's just it's just such a funny feeling actually you've just finished your first like little video and you're just like already thinking about the next one and the next one and the next one so you always you always want more of course uh -huh. and so it's i mean it's it's hard uh, to just do better all the time but i think it's a very interesting process to put yourself through that and to actually look at your footage and sometimes being like, oh my God, like, what was that? Like, <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah. Like that. It's great to see like yourself like behind the screen and just be honest with yourself. And that's really great about doing videos yourself and you're just pretty honest with yourself. You're like, oh, uh, maybe I wouldn't put that in my video because you're doing it. You're like, just, okay, that will go. Or maybe some, sometimes like a videographer will keep a trick that you uh -huh. don't really think is the best. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, we have all had those moments where you yeah. think you've done like the best thing you've ever done and then oh, you, God. you see your clip and you're like, oh. You're like, <laughs> yeah, oh I might, uh, might just delete that and one. 90, and never 90, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was like summer instant delete for sure. <laughs> you just gotta. Well, I think that um, this year's edit, you did like this web story for Stance, right? Yeah. And that was, full of bangers that one was pretty fucking crazy thank you <laughs> it was a trip from you went from triple s to valdosta to valdosta wake park which looked insane the Doesn't footage from there yeah. looked really sick yeah big up to the crew over there and the park is just insane it just did a lot for me i think uh -huh. from there like it really yeah went. i mean when you i'd i'd gone from the triple s to hood river and then when you got there, it looked like you're riding it just yeah, going just, up another yeah. level from. You have the, like, that kind of moment where you just go to the right place and somehow, like, like this little voice, like, telling me, oh, you, might, you should go to Valdos. I have always wanted to go. Uh -huh. And then coming back from Triple S was such a great Triple S this year. Uh, I was really happy and, like, doing my first podium at uh, the Triple S. So I was just like, well, let's go to Valdosta to ride some, some cable and push push it. That really did a lot for sure. I guess that's um, kind of the approach we've seen quite a few of the people in the Kite Park League take, like Sam Light, for example, yeah. who was, I mean, he's been three times Kite yeah. Park League world champion now. Yeah, and, and, four, th and four times uh, Triple S champion. Yeah, now. and I think, his time spent on rails kiting probably isn't so big, but he's done a lot of cable time. And I, I mean, yeah. you see it in his riding. You see him ride it's a crazy. cable, you see him ride a kite. It's the same kind of thing. And it's, it's crazy. That yeah. level of consistency is just like what puts him on top, I guess. Yeah, consistent, steady, <laughs> <laughs> steady killer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I always like look up to those riders. And I remember Aaron and Sam used to make like really cool videos where they were going to the cable park and they were killing it uh -huh. so i always thought like oh that's so nice like they're able to do like two sports and it's really like close together and you can see like so many so many things that are that are so similar and then i always thought it was so nice to see that video parts where they where they were like going guiding just sending like those super sick grabs and stuff and then just like going back to the cable and and shred i always thought it was, was super good so that was a bit the idea behind the the stance web story to show them a bit the best kite park but also 
like uh, like show, like show them that we could uh, hit the, the cable a bit. Yeah, I mean the crossover for what we're doing, it's it's really similar. Yeah, it's really similar. If anything, what we're doing with a kite, in my opinion, is kind of harder. Oh yeah, the piloting, you gotta be a really good pilot. Yeah, you need yeah. to fly a kite yeah. and hit the rail. So people are kind of sometimes looking, they're like, yeah, whatever, that wasn't such a good hit. And it's like, well, if you were dealing with that wind, that chop, you know, that kite. Oh yeah, that gust. That uh, everything else, then you look at what some yeah. people are doing now. And in my opinion, it's, it's pretty gnarly. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it I can mean, be really gnarly. You look at someone <laughs> like Brandon doing a Mob 7 in Hood River, like I invite anyone to come to Hood River and do a Mob you know, do a mode oh, yeah. seven. Me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can come on, come, come on see. down. Like, <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, Brandon is the biggest OG. I mean, let's say it is just, it's just insane. I mean, like style wise, but as well as versatility in between, like, like stomping the biggest spins to like the biggest inverts you have ever seen. Uh -huh. It's just so crazy and so. Like, it's crazy to watch him. It's really yeah. like he's uh, like interesting to yeah. watch because you kind of you see him once and you kind of think you've got his like stuff yeah. figured out. But you're always gonna do something else. Yeah, you, know? you see him the next time and yeah. he's already got like another trick or he's doing it yeah. switch or he's like and he goes big like big and he just hucks. Yeah, yeah, just wordless. <laughs> <laughs> like just yeah, it's really nice to be able to to ride uh, and to just. I don't know, now call these riders my friends and to just hang out with them is just, just so nice. I learned a lot from, from Brandon, Sam or other riders and it's, it's great to see them riding. And they're actually like what they're doing on the kite is insane. Like with the, just like grabbing the bar perfectly in the middle and uh -huh. like making it look good. And on, on the inverts, on rewinds or stuff like that, I always have massive respect for them for, for doing that. Yeah, I mean the level of execution for some of the tricks like a rewind and stuff like this is definitely pretty difficult I'd yeah. say. Yeah, we'll see. You've, yeah. you've got to be on it or it's yeah. not going to happen. You just got to, got to send it. So on the topic of competitions, what's your kind of feeling about competitions? You're, are you are you super interested in them? Is it your like... Actually, I've, I've never really been a contest rider like from like a young age I was I didn't really handle the stress very good and I was always like oh god like okay, another competition you know but I just I don't know I just slowly got bit used to the KPL format and actually like when I when I saw the format of the, the Kite Park League I was way more interested in, in competing in, in that and I mean it just kind of clicked I was just like oh wow that that's a really nice format and it's more quality over quantity and Actually, yeah. Now I'm really, really into the the kite park league comps. I, I just, I just think that it's it's so much fun to be part of that that process and to kind of like go back a little bit the stage change back to really uh -huh. have the riders that can actually make some some decisions and push the format that they want to push and do the tricks they want to do and build the setups they want to do. So it's really interesting to to be part of it all. And yeah, I'm really now I'm. I still have to figure out a bit of some stuff, but uh, I actually enjoy competing a lot on the on the kite park league. Yeah, well, I guess it's just a different different way of competing. Yeah. And a different format, and when I think any competition where the format is um, the format's produced and the format's decided by the riders, and the, that's the majority of the riders saying we should have, you know. The competition run in a certain way. We yeah. should do this. We should do that. Yeah, exactly. If you if you execute that in yeah. the right way, then if, it's always going to be pretty fun to ride in it because it's how it's you always fun. it's how you want it to be. Yeah. You know, that's how it should always be. I mean, in my opinion, but I think the hard part is always when the money gets into it, when there's the corporate sponsors yeah. that need this thing done by this time and the deadline, and this has got to happen and that's got to happen. Then it's always like then it gets a bit different. Yeah, because it's just taking. We've a, seen it happen. It's times, taking yeah. away those aspects. Yeah. It's moving away from, hey, here's a comp that we're going to run at the best time or the best conditions or what, yeah, or exactly. in the best way. It turns it into like, yeah. we're going to make money out of this and yeah. we have to run it now and we have to do the format like this because of, you know, the sponsors and we have yeah. to do it like, 
that's I mean that's always going to be yeah that's what I really love the problem with the with the Cape Park at the moment just like one big family and everybody is going to welcome you with open arms and you're going to be able to figure out a bit the format and just ride with them just cruise a bit with them and it's I mean my opinion how the format is right now you can always have the best rider win it because there's no there's no room for any any mistake you just got to have three hits and you have one pass and sometimes with the wind it's so hard to like line it up perfectly but i mean when you see riders like brandon or, or sam in the past uh, or Iwan, no way they're just just so consistent and you can see like they have this line and and it's great like you're gonna have at the end of the day it's gonna be gonna ride with your friends and it's gonna be the best rider so for sure i think almost any competition format if it's constructed properly is the best person's going to win yeah. or the best person's going to win almost no matter a format as well yeah. if they're really the best yeah. competition rider yeah, exactly you're always going to yeah. get that person coming out on top but i think it's important to just not forget the things that make a competition fun as well you know exactly. and that's you know being around your friends having a having a nice atmosphere yeah. you know like being helping relaxed. each other being yeah. relaxed speak like, about setups so. <laughs> yeah like just getting hyped to ride with yeah. everyone i think is a big part of why people come to the kpl and for me that's a big part yeah. of why i turn up and continue yeah. to me help too. with and things i'm really happy to see some more grums uh, joining us and getting excited about the format the comps and that's really nice to see that was really like the main difference this year and I really encourage like all the all the, the kids, all the grums out there, if if you want to to just show up in the com, just send us a little message and just you can show up and figure it out with the format and it's really a lot of fun actually. So Yeah, I mean I think any kid if they want can turn up to yeah, a stop. There's no sure. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing like holding you, you back from competing or just like you can <laughs> you just can show just, up. Yeah. yeah, you can come. Yeah, exactly. Come check it out, come ride with the crew, exactly. come come feel out you yeah. know some features yeah. ask some tips get some get like go in the park yeah just <laughs> just come and ride really just join the clock and get in the in we line. had we had quite a few kids this year showing up at the, the marina at hood river yeah, yeah at the marina and that was like really cool to see because some of those kids are already like ripping super yeah. hard and it it's was so cool you know, to see. it was one season or like mark cafera he's been there for a yeah. couple seasons now he's still pretty young and yeah I've seen a couple of others actually, Mark and Mark, a couple of others. Tom, Tom, yeah, it's Tim. Uh, yeah, it's just improving so fast. It's really, I mean, it's so nice to see that you can actually see that it requires a bit less strength as well, you know, like just uh -huh. not like straight up and underpasses, but just basically like just more, a bit more of a technique or don't go on the rails and everything. So it's great to see like the grums really like getting into it and going in the park and for sure that's really making me happy actually these days. The grums are our future, so yeah, we definitely want to see more of them in the park. I think. True. Even though I'm still a grum. <laughs> I don't think I'm a grum anymore. <laughs> no. Right. Um, I think we're gonna wrap this up for today and continue. Yeah. We might continue this tomorrow, actually, because... I hope we do. It's I starting think to no get more, dark. No more light. <laughs> it's no more light. And, um, yeah, we're, we're going to have some dinner, so... Yeah, let's grab a beer. But we... I mean, we talked for way longer than I thought we were going to, so... Well, it's actually really interesting. Thanks for having me, Mili. No worries, man. We'll um, continue this tomorrow, and hopefully the viewers and the listeners at home get to hear some more interesting stuff from you. Yes. All right, we're back through the power of the internet. <laughs> you didn't have to wait very long. Um, we finished off yesterday talking with Alex about the Grommies, I think we were discussing. Yeah, we we're talking about the Groms. The new gen kind of coming up, what, what they've been up to, that it's cool that we're seeing a few more of those guys in the park. It would be cool though to talk to you about um, your tricks how do you make new tricks kind of what's the process you go through to get a new trick or work on a new trick well actually basically like i always try to go to the cable and like practice a few tricks and see like some different kind of like rotations or anything but i mean most of the time just be looking at 
adding a little grab or rewind to one trick and just trying to make it a bit like your way. I think it's very important to like take a bit of everybody's riding, but most of most important of all, just like put your own style into one trick and try to make it your own way. But I don't really get, I mean, ready with any kind of special preparation, just a lot of cable and a lot of riding. Just ride a lot. I ride a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. So just riding a lot is your kind of main main way to progress, main yeah. way to learn new tricks. What about um, the kind of fitness side of things? You see a lot of guys, you know, doing some cross training, going to the gym, doing this and that, stretching. Do you have any kind of routine or whatever that you go through when you're uh, kiteboarding and working hard on tricks? Well, like, I'm not really into like the, the training part of, <laughs> of guiding, but I think it's very important that, I mean, Everybody has his own way to, to get ready, to, to prepare. Uh -huh. So if somebody likes to like, go to the gym or whatever, I just, I mean, the more and more I watch through skateboard movies and stuff, and they're not always the, the most fit people, but they just are very sharp and very, like, I mean, very precise in what they're doing. And I've really watched, for example, like Brandon, we, that's doing a lot of different board sports, and that's helped him a lot in, in kiting, I think. And I think the, I think for me, the most important is to do like a lot of different board sports and just kind of like put that to kiting. I just, I think, I mean, if you do some yoga or some stretching for sure it helps, you're gonna feel better for the next session. But I mean, I think riding and just getting inspiration from other board sports is the best preparation you can, you can have, in my opinion. Uh-huh, I guess taking the um, factors from different sports where you might use, you know, your legs more, you know, than doing another sport that might be fun where you use your arms more, like exactly. surfing or whatever, is cool because it's it's not like you have to go to the gym then to exactly. work out those other muscles. You're just having fun but still, you know, strengthening things that you might not be strengthening all the time kiteboarding. Exactly, just stay active and just be on it. And I feel like when in that kind of moments, especially in kiting, it's very like short period and very intense at one moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, you gotta be on it at that moment, but yeah. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say that it's really a marathon kind of no, sport. No, not really. It's short, kind of sharp. Yeah, exactly. And I think, sometimes, I think that's why people get injured as well yeah. with kiting is because you've got those movements in directions that aren't really good for your body or your joints and yeah, kind it's of like kind of forcing. aggressive yeah yeah i mean i think the cider project crossfit helps a lot as well <laughs> <laughs> just you know like pushing these rails like get into in this being in the swamp and just i mean make happen your own little project yeah I mean, just if you're active you'll be you'll be fine yeah i guess that's um you brought up brandon i guess that's pretty much what he's doing yeah he's not he's probably the most muscly person in kiteboarding and he's just doing a lot of stuff he's always active he's always riding a bike or you know climbing a mountain or doing something else crazy exactly and i think it's just that um yeah that drive for him to keep active and doing stuff that's making him also such a good kiteboarder yeah exactly that's really what i what i believe that you have to find your own Thing that drives you and if you can stay active in a lot of different sports then that's for sure going to help you so speaking of the sport where do you see the sport heading in the next i don't know 10 years what, what do you see kind of happening uh, i would love to see more like video oriented contests uh, for example like like any any brand or any contest that will be more related to a part, including like air tricks and rails and even surfing, what like any anything. Like I feel like kiteboarding is so diverse that you could actually do like pretty good like overall part. I would love to see some some of my favorite rider like get out there and film for like a year or something. Uh -huh. I would be really interested to to see what they can come up with. And yeah, I hope to have like more more park events and at more kite parks, that'll be, that'll be perfect. Like just yeah, more kite would, parks everywhere. That would be cool. I think if we could make, um, like what's happened in Hood River, yeah. kind of make that happen in other locations exactly. because 
that's really a driving factor for people getting into a park like what we're interested in is they really need somewhere that they can practice and grow their level and I think the more parks we get around the world the more we're really going to see the level of kiteboarding kind of just rise and rise. Yeah I totally agree I think the more parks and the more fun and the more grums and the more people we're going to have so I think yeah we really like to see some more public uh, kite parks around the world that would be perfect. That would be super cool. Um, speaking of kite parks and speaking of Brandon and etc what kind of what riders really inspire you with the kiteboarding I guess it doesn't have to be park but just whatever I mean my main inspiration has always been like Sam Light and a few of other riders actually now I look at a lot of Brandon and his way of approaching rails or kickers uh -huh. as a competitor as well but yeah, I have like Sam Light, Brandon, Ewan, Noe, like Craig. I mean, all these group. I've always, I've always looked look up to them, and and I, I still do. Yeah. I think they what they're doing is is great. I mean, just the way they're seeing kiteboarding and trying to do some other stuff. And they're really overall in a lot of discipline in kiteboarding as well. Yeah. And I've always looked a lot to Sam because he's regular, like me. So I was. Uh -huh. like you looking could, you could, you could see way. his tricks. Yeah, I was like, okay, so that's also, I will, I will, for example, hit that feature like right foot forward or left foot forward or like two side or your side. I was really looking a bit like what he was doing and uh, uh -huh. it helped me a lot actually, a lot of his videos. I still, I still rewatch them a lot. That's sure. pretty cool. How about, have you ever tried to watch uh, video parts of people that are the opposite stance to you? Yeah, 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 I love and to then, do that. And then it's just tripping you out. You're just tripping. You don't, <laughs> you can't really like look at it sometimes. No, you're just like, oh wait, wait a minute. Was this switch? Was this like regular? And then you know the guy is like goofy, for example. And you're just like, oh, that's like, you get like m more inspiration, I feel like, because you, uh -huh. you're like, you're thinking about those tricks, but you have to do them switch. So you're like, oh, that'll be, that'll be good. I mean, s some of the stuff we do is just switch. Yeah. By nature, we do a switch trick exactly. easier sometimes than exactly. a natural. But I've definitely had times where I've taken a trick I've seen someone doing and put it on the computer and like just flipped it the other way around so I could watch it like yeah, true. I have, I have watch it in the well. good stance. <laughs> yeah I mean like I mean being switched is also something that's I mean still a bit vague in Kaiborn I feel like because we have I mean we're swapping the bar we're a lot thinking about the way we swap the bar but uh -huh. I feel like I mean I'm most mostly kind of looking and sometimes on like like what, like what food is like a, your, your good one, you know. Like. Uh -huh. So it's good to to see that as well, you know. For example, if you're regular, it's gonna be very different the way you're gonna approach a slider or an air trick. And actually, maybe sometimes you're gonna realize that a switch trick is easier than your regular trick, and you didn't expect it. And you're like, oh, actually, I can do, for example, switch back mob, and it feels nicer yeah. somehow. Well, there's kind of a few different groups of people I think in kiteboarding. You have like the people that are thinking their switch hand yeah. is the harder approach. Yeah, exactly. And then the people that are thinking that their switch stance yeah, is the harder the, approach. Yeah, exactly. Like more of a wakeboard yeah. approach. And I, I will personally, I think just because I did a lot of yeah. different board sports, I always feel like my switch foot is the is the weird approach. I don't... Yeah, me too. My, aunt, my hand that I'm yeah, swapping the bar with or yeah, whatever doesn't really... doesn't really matter. No, it's not really making a difference, but the when I'm coming in switch to an obstacle, I always feel like, oh, yeah, I'm, like, switched. I'm switched. This is now, definitely yeah. switch. Yeah, I've always had like that impression as well. And that's why also like when you, when you start, sometimes you do like all your tricks like in one tag and uh -huh. you get really good at it. But, and then sometimes you're like, oh, wait a minute, I have to do them switch. So yeah, for sure. I mean, there's some riders that, that have more like with the hands, but I mean, yeah, as you said, it just depends on what you've been doing and the board sport you've been, uh -huh. you've been doing, I think. I think everyone, I mean, we have people that say this and that about being switched, but I think everyone, if they're coming into a super gnarly feature, there's no way that they're like, this is switched because yeah. my hands switch. <laughs> I'm like, going to switch now. So I think at that point, then you're like, all right, yeah, you know, like, switch foot is switch. Yeah. Is switch. Having a switch hand on the bar, it I, I think is not going to make a difference. Exactly. And also some people, they're mixed around as well because you've got the people that have their switch foot and their switch hand might be on the same yeah. tack. But another person where it's their normal hand and their switch foot, what um, what approach are you? You've, have you got your regular 
regular foot with your good hand as the lead hand, or is it the other way? Actually, no, I, I have like my, that's what's really been a bit confusing for me is that I have my like kind of like bad hand with my good foot. So when I approach the rail regular, so left foot forward, I have my left arm and I'm right-handed. Yeah. But I mean, I, actually at the beginning on some tricks, it felt a little bit different, a bit maybe harder, but yeah. I'm sure like for some other tricks, it helped me a lot, like for some kind of like rewinds and uh -huh. other tricks that actually might be a bit harder for some people. That's actually helped me, helped well, me a lot. Yeah, I'm the same way. My natural foot is on the same side as yeah, my regular yeah. bad hand but it's only my bad hand because i'm right-handed yeah and it's actually my good my good arm for controlling the kite i exactly. have i'm more like technical and good execution with that hand but it's just not my strong arm exactly so like like blind you feel more precise on blind you uh -huh. the control of your kites and stuff as well i, I have the same actually yeah I think that's not particularly common though. Most people no, it's not. are the other way. Yeah, exactly. Like Iwan or Noe or I know, like, I know a couple, I'm, I mean, I, I look a lot at that. Kind of, I find it uh, kind of interesting to, uh -huh. to see uh, like a rider approach the rail and what's going to be his good hand or bad hand. I, I feel it's quite interesting if you really look at the process of learning a new trick, for example. Yeah, it's definitely changing sometimes I mean, obviously not with judging because you can't get that technical no. when you're judging, but it's just it's changing my opinion of the way, you know, I feel about, oh, someone did this trick in their video part. Yeah. How was their setup for that? You yeah. know, did they have their yeah. switch foot and their switch hand yeah, or like how hard was it for them actually? Oh, you put them like both, like mirror. You have like, uh, for example, like everyone left and left foot forward and everyone like right foot forward and you, and it's always interesting to be like, oh, which one is switch or which one is regular? Uh -huh. That's really cool as well. Yeah, I mean, it's cool to see when people can take a trick and then they can like mirror that trick and do it on their switch side because then you know, okay, they have in they have boarding, all right, they've, they've actually got it both ways. They're definitely like doing it switch now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really like cool to be able to do tricks both ways. I really encourage like anybody to try. It might feel a little bit frightening in the beginning, but actually it's it's really fun to be able to do them both ways. Any can be any trick actually. Yeah. Especially and if you're injured or if you have like maybe like you feel like less less your shoulder or your knee, whatever, just try it the other way around and you might be surprised. Yeah, I, I think I learned a lot of tricks just from being injured in some way, having a sore wrist from falling off a skateboard or yeah, exactly. you know, hurting my elbow and then you know, you don't want to just no. stop kiting, so you're just trying to do Good. stuff the other way instead. And I think a lot of people learn, end up yeah. learning switch tricks because so of injuries and because of stuff like that. And grabs and all that. So I want to get into a little bit about what other sports might inspire you as well. You, you talked about the people that inspire you in kiteboarding, but what sort of sports and maybe other athletes in other sports inspire you? do you think? I mean, I look a lot in, into wakeboarding, snowboarding and skateboarding. Why? Because I, I always, always amazed me that some people take their own board sport into like some incredible direction. Like uh -huh. if it's in snowboarding, if they do some kind of street videos or whatever, they always try to be a bit original. And that's really what I have like seen like similarities with kiting that actually we can do exactly the same. We can get original, build some setups, uh, ride wave kickers, do some air tricks. We can actually do like a bunch of stuff. Like we can, like you can have your video part build around so many disciplines. It's just really great to kiteboarding. But I look a lot at, uh, yeah, wakeboarding, snowboarding videos, and recently a lot of skateboard videos because there's, I mean, they're just a step ahead. <laughs> so it's good to see them what they have been, I mean, they were also a young board sport before and to see the, the way they've, they've gone. So. Yeah, it's easy for us to take um, inspiration from these other sports because we can do so many things in our own sport. Exactly. It's so versatile compared to, in my opinion, any sport in the world. You can basically ride a skateboard, a surfboard, a wakeboard. There's foiling now, people are racing. There's just so, so many facets of things you can do behind a kite that it's cool to be able to draw inspiration from all these different sports and sort of 
mold that into what we're doing in some way. I think that's why we, we love skateboarding so much, in my opinion, because there's so many different things that can make you happy. And then at the end of the day, we just all talk about skateboarding. That's, I think, the most important. Just be, be stoked in what you're doing. And if you can get original, do something a little bit different, I think that's, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, it's the freedom. Yeah, exactly. You have the freedom to do yeah. whatever you want just because you can ride so many different boards in so yeah. many different ways. It's, it's actually just crazy. If you think about what you can do behind a kite compared to any other sport, it's crazy. It's, there's no comparison. No comparison. Zero. You can just so, like, you just like your own kite and you can just go wherever you want when it's, when it's on. Super cool. What um, are some of your favorite kite video parts? over the time. We talked about um, autofocus in the early days and some of those Cabrina videos, etc. They they were really good for back then, but maybe some of the newer videos, what, what's sort of been your inspiration or just ones you've enjoyed? I think video parts have evolved a lot. We used to have like only air tricks in video parts and then now it has changed a little bit. Yeah. But I think if I had to take a few, I will take definitely the Brazil from Sam Lai. And uh -huh. Alex Fox, I think that video air tricks wise was just a bit ahead of, of his time and loved it. Like all the rewinds, tight grabs, very precise video. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I thought, I still think it's one of the best video parts out there. Yeah, there was some good tricks from yeah. Sam Light in that video. Yeah, I think he had what the rewind, yeah, slim, he had, like, so many different tricks. The like, 313 rewind, 313 rewind, true, yeah, yeah, 310. He had uh -huh. like KGB. Rewind, yeah, like slim, slim blind. I was like really like heavy part. I remember that. I was like, whoa, that's like. Th was that was that the one where it was almost all slow mo or something? I can't yeah, it was really. Pretty, pretty, pretty it was slow -mo. all slow mo, yeah. And then after that, I will say um, the bubble for sure with Craig and Noe had like insane part in the bubble. Uh -huh. I thought like that was really like well well rounded like like some air tricks, some rails, a bit of everything. Yeah. And I thought it was really well put together. I think that those two were like some of my favorite video parts. And I know Ewan is working uh, too, like uh, he did like this uh, stranded video in uh, Oud River that you made actually. Yeah, that was yeah. La yeah, last, last year, year we did that one. And at that time was really good video and I still look at it. Uh, I, watched, I watched it today actually. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's a great video, like kicker tricks. Uh, choice of tricks, just different angles, a bit like different, like kind of like a video style. I thought was a bit different. And uh -huh. I really liked it, the, the way you were looking at it. Yeah, those were like probably my four, four favorite uh, videos. Cool. Um, we talked about the favorite kite video parts and we've talked a bit about the other people that we're riding with but who are your favorite kind of people to ride with? Would it be those same people that are in the video parts or? Uh, yeah, almost. I else? mean, probably my, my good buddy Nico. He's just really Nico Giloman. The hype man. Yeah, the hype man just hyping everybody. <laughs> just like, I don't know, like when I'm riding with him, he just, he gets like really good energy, just pushing me. Like, uh -huh. you just, you know, you have those friends, like, like they are not always like your fish, just competitors, but it's just, Sometimes it's just like, just just super good. Like you have this like really good uh, vibe on the water and just really helping each other. And I think everyone has yeah. some friends or yeah, people exactly. like that. Like yeah. I have people at home that are super fun yeah, to ride with. Exactly. And I really like going back home and riding with those yeah. people because they have just such a different outlook as well to what, you know, sometimes we're getting caught up in the whole yeah. trying to be a kiteboarder, exactly. trying to make a video, trying yeah, to do yeah. this, trying to do that. And your friends or people at home that you ride with, they're just they're just chilling and just kiting 100% exactly. for fun. So that's cool to go back and ride with those people because yeah. they sometimes, you know, make you realize, okay, I, it's pretty cool that I get to kite all the time and everything. I shouldn't like take that for granted yeah. so much. And it's cool to just have fun and exactly like you kite. find a good person, find the person you want to to ride with, and just enjoy your time. I feel like. At the Kai Park League, we have a really nice group, though. Like, you, I mean, I couldn't really like take a few names because they, all the guys are just, uh, all the girls are just so nice to write with. But definitely, some of the Marina rats were with Pierre, you, and uh -huh. it's so much fun. Like, you can see that 
everybody's just pumped when somebody learns a new trick and that's I think what it's all about. Yeah, it's cool to be able to go to a spot and just hang out at that spot. Like we, I mean, that's what we did this year yeah, in Hood River. We, we just hung out at the marina <laughs> for two months, basically. Yeah. And it's cool that we have, we talked about having some of those people at home that are like just chilling and kiting and having a really good time. And that's kind of mirrored in Hood River where we ride at the marina. We have those people, there's the A-train, there's the homie, there's, the homie. you know, there's these guys that are there they're just chilling and having a super good time and they're making that atmosphere like so much better because of that, you know. That's, that's just the best, just having this group and wherever you are. And I, we spend so much time on the road as well. Just, it's very important to, I mean, it's so great to have like such a community as well. I think uh -huh. that's very important and that's what we have in Wood River and I hope you always stay the same for sure. Yeah, I think as long as the people that you're riding with and the way we are showing, you know, the younger kids how we're acting and how to do things, I think that that kind of philosophy and that mentality will always just carry on there. with what we're doing. So, I mean, that's the way I hope it will turn out. For sure, I hope so too. Speaking of cool spots, Hood River has the park. We're here now in Brazil, in Ikapui. And we're hosted, yeah, big up to the Kite Mansion. We're hosted by the Kite Mansion here and they're doing a really good job trying to organize this event for us. Yeah. And I'd just like to get a bit more information about what are you doing here, what's kind of, what have, what have you been doing here and what's sort of the plans for, for what's happening here? I mean, like the idea was to, I've always dreamed about having like a kite park in, in Brazil. That's always been like a goal of mine and I think of a few people. and. It's just like with Sam and Nico, like the owners of the Kite Mansion, they like they've always been like like really like long time friends, and they, we all had this project together of making it happen. And they were really like, they handed me the right tools, and they helped me a lot. And we slowly, little by little, we build like one rail, then one kicker, and a little bit more every year. And the idea behind it is really to have a, a kite park in Brazil that people can come and ride with us and just. I mean, enjoy that perfect win and at the same time just improve and just do new tricks and everything. And of course, to organize the, the Kite Mansion Open is another thing for the, for the Kite Park League. Uh huh. So. Yeah, I guess Brazil is such a good location to ride obstacles. Just the wind is so, so good. steady and perfect compared to any other place we go, really. And the obstacle, I guess, is getting that infrastructure and getting the rails and things set up in you know a country you don't live in a place exactly. you're not in all the time somewhere that's maybe a bit more rural and hard to get to that's not always an easy thing but definitely if we can get something like that happening and you know get it moving i think it's really going to progress what's happening within the park scene and in just within kiteboarding because the level will rise so much from having an event in a place that's just a really good location exactly. for kiteboarding. That's what I've always wanted is like, like all the riders from everywhere and all the best riders or any riders will come and just add this little thing to the project, like build this or do this new trick and it will just make it like bigger just by itself. I think it will be very good for, for the sport as well. And I mean, who has never dreamed about riding a, a kite park in Brazil for sure. Um, yeah, there's so many things that go behind like a, like a park like that. But yeah, yeah, very lucky to have the Kite Mansion crew helping us and making it happen. Yeah, it's good to have those people behind us because a lot of times I think maybe the viewers at home and other people, they don't really know what's involved in yes. setting up rails, setting up a park. You know, there's a lot more management than you think, even in a place like Hood River where we have people from our crew living and they yeah. can help set up things and we have a lot of people there to do stuff if we need to it's still a lot of work it is a lot of work yeah. and it's usually a team effort you know yeah. we're relying on on each other yeah probably. just on each other and you know no one's being paid no to <laughs> to put these obstacles no. out there to set up a park just doing it for the love of it so it's um I think maybe that's also something that's bringing the people together 
as well, because when you have to work together to achieve some common goal, it's kind of, you know, bonding everyone a bit as well. I just, I just love that process when people come, they have their stuff and they get something in, in return. I, I, I think it's beautiful. Like, I've seen people coming here and film video parts, like triple S wildcard videos, like a, like a bit of everything. And I hope it's gonna, they're gonna keep coming and just adding their stuff. And I think with this spot in particular, I mean, it's just shred paradise. Like you got like that perfect right foot forward line, that perfect left foot forward line. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, there is no limit. You can, you can do whatever you want, do as many rails, like air tricks in it with a, a kicker at the end. I mean, there's so many options and that's what I, I found really interesting to, to just see it happen. Yeah, having a spot where it's possible to have a line yeah. set up and having the right depth water and everything exactly. is not that easy to no, find. It's so it's so hard to find. So it's cool this spot actually can go right foot forward and left foot forward and it's a depth that we can set up. Exactly. Rails hard on the bottom and set it makes it easier to set up, you know, exactly. different features and unique stuff that typically we wouldn't be able to set up so exactly. easily in a deep spot. Yeah, that's that was the goal to have like also different kind of rails like not always the same ones but we could have like hand rails and other kind of rails that we could just mix together or, and make lines. So just if you have a bit of imagination, anything is possible for sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this um, stop turns out because there's a lot of heavy features out there yes. I've seen so far. Maybe we'll even make a little video for the people at home just yeah, to, really hope so. like, to have a look at you know, the setups before we start the competition and also for the riders maybe to get their heads around yeah. what the obstacles will be and how that's how the lay of the land will be for the event. Yeah, I really want to to make that happen that actually riders and just followers or just anybody that just look at the format and just look at the setup we're gonna have for the comp with that right foot forward line and the left foot forward line and the kicker and just see a bit like what they can expect and what's gonna happen because there's definitely some some different rails this year, so it's great. Yeah, it's cool. Um, thanks a lot for organizing this event and helping to put your, you know, spin on the KPL and trying to progress things. It's always, uh, you know, it's, ne it's never as easy as people think from no, the outside. Sure. Everyone thinks, oh, you just did a little bit of this and that, but there's, I know just from, you know, helping with a lot of events over time, there's way more things than people think yeah, there's needs to so be many, done, and so. yeah, I hope everything goes good and that we get the right authorization and we do really a good job with the mangrove. Like, I'm very aware of uh, what plastic is doing to the ocean and what's doing to the birds, and I hope we can also put the Kai Park League on a, on a, I mean, on a difficult subject that's pollution. So I hope we're going to be able to see the riders uh, like coming together and make like a difference to a spot. I think you can always make a difference to to where where you're riding, like if you love a spot and you see it becoming like there's more plastic and everything, just just take some friends, go grab a bag and just uh -huh. pick up as much trash as you can and you're gonna see a difference. Yeah, it doesn't take that long if you have 20 people or even less, yeah. 10 people. If you get hard at work and just start picking up some trash in about 30 minutes, exactly. like we picked up a whole yeah, truckload of trash. I remember that day and the spot was so much better the next day. So. It was instantly cleaner and I, the next day we came back, there was already some cows eating the grass, yeah, there was some was birds nice. flying back. So you yeah. saw pretty quickly what effect you can have, a positive effect you can have on a spot by just, you know, picking exactly. up your trash or picking up someone else's trash, even yeah. if it's not yours yeah, on the ground, sure. you know? Especially if it's not yours. I mean, hopefully you help, will not throw something. You know, help, helping, uh, helping the place look nice for everyone else is also something that, you know, going to make you feel good in the end. So exactly. I think that's a cool thing to do. And I'm glad that the KPO and the Kite Mansion are kind of su supporting that philosophy yeah. and not just kind of organizing event. They're also exactly. thinking about the surroundings and thinking about, you know, other people that are using the spot and other animals and stuff yeah. like that. Well, thanks for coming here. And I mean, I hope people are gonna be able to see what we're up to in the, the next few months. Uh, there's definitely some some good stuff happening at the moment uh, with the setup, the, the videos, the, the lines with the drone and everything. So yeah, I'm really interesting to how it's gonna I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm super excited to get back to filming in the park and 
trying to get some new angles and just, yeah, working stuff out. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for being the first guest on thanks our show. Thanks for having me. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in to the Line Club. I don't really know if you thought this was any good. Maybe the sound's windy. Maybe I say like and but and though and whatever way too many times. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully you got some insight into um, Alex May's, his kind of life, the way he's approached kiteboarding, what he thinks about things. And I hope that we get to talk to more people soon about their ideas, the way they think, see things in kiteboarding. So yeah, if you like the show, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and get ready for another episode. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mitty. All right, that's that. Oh, Go fuck, we that. didn't speak about the injuries. <laughs>